Now we're going to look at relative motion, which is a way to describe the motion of an object in different reference frames. So I like my simple definition. This is often way overcomplicated. I'm going to show you an easy way to think about it. But my simple definition would be different values in different, different, uh, what is my simple definition? Reference frames. The thing is moving how it's moving. It's just how we describe it would depend on our frame of reference. Let's see. So I'm going to start, though, with really not getting into velocity. So we want to start easy. Let's start easy. Start easy with position. All right. You don't, often people want to jump straight to velocity for relative motion. No. Start with position. And let's consider the position vectors of Hal. Oh, actually, no. Hal's not here. Hal and Al are in couples therapy. Don't ask. Trust me. I have one of the plastics here. The position vector of the plastics, PL, in two frames. And the two frames are what we call the lab frame. So lab frame usually just refers to the building or the earth, the one that everybody feels like is stationary. So lab just means building, but usually we call it lab. It's nice and short. And the other frame we'll call prof. That means my frame. I was going to call it the Hafner frame. That felt too egotistical. I was going to call it the Jason frame. I thought you might be uncomfortable calling it that. So we'll go with prof frame, L frame and P frame. So the lab frame, we'll just draw our coordinate system like this. And we will say the main coordinate system, the one you always think about, x and y, is the lab frame, which we'll abbreviate with an L. So if you imagine the origin of the lab frame is sort of here, right, in an xy plane along the floor. Right? So there's the lab frame. I'm going to stand here. Okay? I am at the origin of the professor frame at all times. Right? The professor frame goes wherever I go. I go over here, professor frame goes over here. I go over here, professor frame goes over here. So I'm sort of at the other side. I'm going to stand uh, right here. And it's really great to have a frame that just follows you around all the time. I highly recommend you get one. So this is the prof frame. Right. Now, where is Hal in all this mess? Or, or I'm sorry, the plastic in all this mess. So there's the origin. Here's me. Eh, the plastic's kind of up here, like that. There's the plastic. Plastic doesn't get a frame. Right? He's part time. Right? So what we got to do is simply draw position vectors. OK, we're going to draw three. First, we're going to draw, let's see, the r vector like that. And that is the position of, oh dear, I called it H. But if I switch it to P, then uh, P was Professor. So Frank, I'm giving him a name. That plastic is named Frank. So mm, Frank, it's the heaviest plastic. That's how I remember. Um, so this is the r, the vector of Frank, F, in the lab frame. Why is this the lab frame? Because it's drawn from the origin of the lab frame. We could also figure out where am I in the lab frame. We all care about that, right? R of the professor in the lab frame. So the first subscript is what it is, what position you're talking about. Second subscript is the frame. We could also think a little bit about Frank in my frame. Right? Let's draw that vector. Well, my frame is here. It's kind of to the left and up, right? So it's kind of over here and up. It's this vector right here over and up. That is the position of Frank in P in my frame. So all we did was draw three position vectors. Nothing's even moving. Right? Relative frames, you don't have to have things move. It's not that big a deal. But if you look at these, it also looks like we've added three vectors. Right? You have R, professor lab frame, and then head to tail, you've added R, Frank in the professor's frame, and you get this vector, R, Frank in the lab frame. So you could write it like this. R. Frank in the lab, that vector is R, Frank in the professor frame, plus that vector, position vector, R, professor in the lab frame. But most of these problems don't involve positions. They involve velocities. You want to think about velocity. Well, guess what? All you got to do is take a derivative. 
And if any of these things start moving in time, or if they all start moving in time, this just becomes their velocities. The, the velocity of Frank in the lab frame is equal to the velocity of Frank in my frame, the professor frame, plus the velocity of me, the professor in the lab frame. And most of our relative motion we talk about, soon we'll talk about inertial reference frames where they have to be zero acceleration. But if you want to get outside of that area, you could take another derivative. And what would you get? You'd get the relationship between their accelerations. The acceleration of Frank in the lab frame equals the acceleration of Frank in the professor frame plus the acceleration of the professor in the lab frame. So we got all of this just from this little position vector diagram. And really, this is the one that you're going to use the most in problems, is the uh, relative velocities. So we can kind of check it. If we imagine now, let's let things move. Let's think about this case. I'm standing here, and I'm walking this way. And I look at Frank. And it looks like Frank is going positive velocity to the right. Let's think if that makes sense. Was Frank actually moving in the lab frame? No, that's 0. So. But I did move in the lab frame. I started moving uh, in sort of the negative direction at one meter per second. So what would I have to observe Frank do? To make this true for 0 equals something, minus 1, it has to be plus 1. And sure enough, that's what I see. If I walk this way one meter per second, I see Frank moving that way one meter per second. Now, some people have trouble envisioning their own frame of reference. They're so used to thinking about the ground. But for faculty, for professors, we're actually quite, quite good at it, as you can imagine. So now what we're going to do is see how we can use this for typical physics problems. 